Hey everybody and welcome to Investing with Steph YouTube channel. So uh, um, I thought I'll take this time to do a nice uh, question and answer live of course but uh, question and answer that I've got from I got some questions from my brother and I'm really appreciated for that so thanks brother and then uh, I got some some other question from one of my friends on my YouTube channel and then I just put some questions here maybe um, if you're watching this and you've been following me, <clears throat> maybe you've uh, uh, looked at some videos and maybe you want to know who this guy is. So put one or two video uh, photo, uh, questions here so maybe you can just uh, get to know me a little bit better. So the first question I have here was what platforms to use? Uh, probably what platforms, what brokerage accounts to use uh, when investing? So obviously it's all personal. All these questions are all personal to you and my experience and what I use because that's the only um, advice I can give to somebody is the ones that I'm following and that I believe in <coughs> excuse me so uh, what what I use is I use TD Ameritrade those uh, it's, it's they've got a nice trading platform as well so they called uh, a, pl a platform called um, think of swim and it's a great options chain if you know what options is uh, they also have a nice news feed so they stay up to date with uh, you know, with companies and they have other functions that I don't even use but it's it's good for traders and stuff so it's a holistic program let's say like that they have everything it's, it's they have a plethora of information that you can use so TD Ameritrade is good I know Fidelity is there and they have some good um, uh, brokers that you can use but I do not use them and then interactive broker oh TD Ameritrade is just American um, and then um, oh, and they do over-the-counter stocks as well that, they, that you can buy maybe like Canada or some mining stocks but uh, interactive brokers that, are, that that's my newest platform that I'm using because they allow you to uh, to uh, convert your currency so let's say you want to buy in Hong Kong let's say you want to buy in Japan or Canada or even England um, you can convert your dollars or whatever currency you have in that currency and then you can buy it um, uh, on there on that stock exchange so they, there's a small fee to it but it's so minuscule that it won't change uh, much the upside uh, of doing it in another country is much much bigger so or yeah, much nicer. So I'm using interactive brokers. I do have a first trade account, but I, I have never used them because I found TD Ameritrade and they were way faster, easier to deal with. Um, Schwab, Fidelity Schwab. Uh, I, I I don't even know for sure. I, I, I don't. Oh, my, my friend actually used Easy Equities and uh, he uses that. He's a South African citizen. He's been using Easy Equities to buy and sell stocks. Um, uh, I've never used it before. I know they have some high commission. And by the way, TD Ameritrade has no zero commission for trading, for, for buying and selling stocks, for trading options and that they do have here. Yeah. So just uh, overview of some platforms to use. Um, uh, how many times to check your account? <laughs> now, once you have your account, when to check it and how many times do you check it? Now, obviously, this is personal. Uh, personally, I check it as as often as I can or when the stock market opens that is my uh, my time to check it do I have action on it of course not I don't I don't uh, buy and sell stocks on a daily basis that is not uh, the way I trade and that's not the way how I believe people should trade because um, if you if you've seen some of my videos you'll understand that I am like to be uh, known as a value investor so that's basically try to do your due diligence on that company, try to understand what is the value and the future outlook of that company. And then you uh, you try to understand what is the price of that company right now. And is it according to the value? Because price is what you pay and value is what you get. So you just want to wait for the, for, for the price to come down to what you think is a fair margin of safety price. And then you want to jump on it. And uh, Warren Buffett likes to say is, when you jump on it at that time, you want to jump on it with, a bucket you want to go outside with a bucket not with a thimble like a little thing when it rains you want to jump in with it both feet and you want to put as much money as you can in that uh, stock because it's in your circle of confidence and you're confident that uh, the company is not going to go under and they're going to be much um, higher than what they are right now and that's why you jump in with it do I follow the advice 100% no I don't but <laughs> because it's it's scary and he's he's a way more uh, advanced uh, investor than me. 
so the reason why I said that is because you get different uh, investors. You get value investors. You get day traders. You get the options traders. You get, I mean, I read a book the other day, and I can't even remember how many different types of uh, traders you get. But um, depending on what type of trader you are, if you're a day trader, if you're a swing trader, you're going to watch it every day. So just try. investing is all about knowing yourself and trying to get to understand what you like and what you don't like. So that is why I love investing and it's a great journey. So I guess you have to try to ask yourself the question, what type of investments do I want to make? Which ones have made the most money and which ones have not? And so far, the ones with value investors like buy and hold, um, not worry about the stock price on a daily, on daily, um, on a daily basis, they have succeeded the best so far. Um, because Benjamin Graham said that um, the stock market in the short run is a voting machine. So people vote with their money very quickly, up and down, but in the long run, it's a weighing machine. Uh, I guess why I said that is because you can't run away from your weight just like that. So it, all prices will come down to the mean or where they're supposed to be. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Long-winded answer, but there you have your answer. Um, how to stay on top of the market. Um, this is pretty much the same. So obviously I've done some videos on this, who to follow. The people that you listen to is, is, is crucial because they will give you the information um, uh, to help you make decisions. So people to follow. The, the, that's the great way to stop, stay on top of the market. Read, 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 read. I don't think I've, I've had any good investor or even successful investor that did not read. I mean, Warren Buffett reads six hours a day. So he sits down, reads the newspapers, take a book, read a book, read all the news, try to understand how companies operate, how things uh, run, how, I mean, how life gets put together, you know, so you can, uh, how life gets put together. So you can understand what the future of that company will be. So read, read, read. That's the best way to stay on top of the market. I found this one app, it's called Stocksy. So um, I downloaded Stocksy, and uh, you can put your companies in your in your profile, and then on that company you can click on it. You can see the market cap quickly. You can see the price, and then you can go. There's a news feed there, and they put news of all different uh, like Reuters, Bloomberg, uh, Wall Wall Street Journal. They put all the news that comes out on that platform. So for me, it was a free platform and I found a lot of value in it and then obviously you can subscribe to newsletters Th those are the best way to see um, your company and what the market will hold in the future okay so those were the questions that I actually got from my brother and I must say I'm I'm, I'm, I'm surely impressed <laughs> so well done brother uh, another one was um, th the biggest regrets that I had in life uh, <laughs> Uh, I guess everything in life is a learning curve and you learn uh, from each decision that you make. But, uh, yeah, I would say um, the biggest regret I've made was um, not uh, learning investing at a younger age, understanding what it entails. I knew that I had to save money, but I didn't know really what to do with that money once I saved it put it in a bank account, money market account. I didn't have people around me to, to educate me and to guide me and to, to basically take my hand and say, listen, I have made money this way and I think you should look into it. I got it late in my life and that is one thing that I regret. Um, I mean, it wasn't, you don't know what you don't know. So is it something I regret or is it just my life path that didn't go that way, you know? So uh, whatever. So that's one thing. And then reading. I also didn't have anybody that pushed me too much about reading. I didn't have access to it uh, at often. I was more of an active person, so I didn't read as much. So, um, yeah, reading is the biggest regret that I had. I mean, you, you can only read so much, right? So the longer you wait, the less books you're going to read in your life. So now I'm trying to play catch-up. So I'm reading a lot. I'm listening to audiobooks. I'm listening to YouTube videos. I'm, I'm trying to podcast, trying to jam as much as I can because uh, making up for lost time. Uh, so that's one of the regrets. Another regret that I have was um, not expressing my thanks enough. You know, sometimes you're in a situation with some great people, like honest people, uh, um, people, deep people that you can actually connect with, you know, and uh, you don't really express your feeling at that time. You, you Maybe you're too scared, you're worried what that person will think, You oh, you don't want to be too much, you know. 
you know, just to ex just to connect with that person in a different level, to say to him, you are really thankful for him being in your life. You know, that at that moment, there's nothing more precious. I know it's awkward sometimes, but uh, when, when that person leaves, you always think, man, I should have told them, I should have. I should have expressed. I, I should have let them know how my how I felt in that moment. You know, they, there's a saying that says, "We only appreciate a moment once it becomes a memory," and it's so true. And uh, that I regret, and um, I've tried to change that as much as I can uh, as I get older. But uh, yeah, I guess, and also cultivating relationships. You know, I've been traveling quite a lot, to 40 countries, and um, yeah, sometimes you lose friends down the down the road you also make a lot of friends i must say but those friends that you make short-lived you it's not always sometimes a bit superficial but at least you're making connection you're learning some things at that moment um yeah so those are the things i regret and that i'm changing right now and i i really appreciate it. and that's maybe why I'm making this for maybe you can listen to it and maybe you can start some videos <laughs> and uh, you can learn from it because yeah it's it's phenomenal it's great by the way, thank you for watching this. I appreciate it. Thank you for spending your time here. Um, please let, let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. Maybe we can answer them. And if you want to know more about me, I would like to know more about you. So please go ahead and, 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 and put some comments there and tell me who you are. And maybe we can connect on a in, a, in, in reality, <laughs> not on YouTube uh, per se. Um, uh, another question I have here, and this might be a long one uh, if you don't want to stick around. But this one is, uh, what are your hobbies? Now, if you don't know what a hobby is, what like what do you like to do in your in your spare time, in your free time? Um, maybe. Okay, so let's start with this. Uh, when I was uh, much younger, I well, I'm from South Africa originally, and I I love sport. I um, I've done quite a lot of sports in my life. I, I can't tell you all the sports right now, professionally and just uh, for fun. But uh, so in South Africa, our schools are are highly focused on outdoor sports, mostly, because our weather is great. So we have uh, a sport athletics. We have athletics in the beginning of the year, uh, in the summer, and then we have uh, rugby uh, and for the guys, and then hockey for the guys and the girls. Then we have netball. And um, so... Rugby was obviously number one, and then I also played hockey for school. And then, so those are my, I'm, I'm leading to my hobbies too, so you can understand a little bit about me. Then, um, then later in the season, we will have then cricket. So we play that in the south, in India and Sri Lanka, so uh, and England. So uh, I, will, I will play cricket then as well, and th those are in my school time. So in my school, I was quite active, very busy. Uh, uh, but later I got to do some club sports as well. So in between those sports, I did a lot of club sports. I also did some swimming, uh, um, and yeah. So after school, I started, uh, I started also playing club rugby and that's where I got a, a contract to go play in Germany. So I played rugby and I got a contract to go play in Germany for six, seven months, six months, I think. Yes. So I played in Germany for six months. And then when I came back, I played club rugby and then I stopped. Then at 23, 22, I started uh, doing skydiving. So I really, I really wanted to skydive. My friend said, "Okay, now it's the time. You come." So I was like, "Okay, <laughs> JJ, if you're watching this, thank you, bro. I really appreciate it. You changed my life." Um, so I, yeah, I started skydiving. So I've got 195 skydives behind my name. And uh, so I started skydiving and I went up and up and up and I wanted to, my, my, my dream, my goal at that time was to, to travel the world and to skydive. So I wanted to, to, to get my license um, and then go up, try to become a, a tandem master and um, uh, yeah, just instructor basically and then go around the world or to another location and then skydive there. They use me for that season and then stay there in that country and then go to another country and jump there and stay there. So I wanted to do this maybe like a gypsy, like a Rolling Stone. So yeah, that was my goal. And 
stuff. But uh, then I got a, a chance to go on the cruise ships. So I met my wife and things changed. And then I got into a, an accident. So a big accident that changed my whole life in skydiving. So yeah. So my hobby is skydiving. Another one is uh, scuba diving. So as I was working on the ships, I would then go home to South Africa for vacation. And I started doing my uh, scuba diving license. And I did my um, advanced license as well. So because I saw the positives in that because I had the time and then as I go back to the cruise ships then there I can uh, as I travel and I did as I travel go to I to the islands to the Caribbean and then there I would do some scuba diving and I did I, I scuba dive with the sharks and um, <laughs> actually for free because you know <laughs> I'm so fortunate because the ships had some uh, um, um, excursions and uh, they wanted us as crew members to go and then come back and put some reviews and you get it for free so <laughs> that was fantastic a good life um, so I did uh, scuba diving and uh, lately I love reading so I love reading and uh, or I, I would say I love reading do I read as much as I want to read no so I like reading uh, uh, I just uh, my baby or our baby my wife and I um, child is just over one year so that is a big part of my life a hobby but then um, I also started doing triathlon and uh, I've been I've been doing that for just under a year right now and I did my first triathlon race and I was going to go to Thailand uh, and then sort of basic sickness came up so I couldn't go and then also I, I I walked outside of my apartment and I fell into a manhole one of those drains and I don't know what happened how my foot landed but yeah it swelled up like crazy blue and it's been almost six months now and I can't run now so yeah so I just wanted to make this video so you know a little bit more about me if you had some questions now you know so uh, my hobbies now running and exercising mostly and reading and reading a lot about uh, investments and also making YouTube videos that is uh, I, I love doing this and please give me some of your uh, feedback. I would really appreciate that. And if you have any questions, let's go and and uh, answer them. And um, maybe I can interact with you and I can put some answers for you. Maybe you can answer them for me. Um, yeah. So those are the questions I wanted to, I wanted to cover today um, to leave you with something, food for thought. Uh, yeah, if you want to know anything anymore or any anything else let me know and we will make some more videos on some mining companies and companies that I'm invested in or looking at investing in so until then I see you in the next video um, my name is Stefan and thank you for watching investing with Steph YouTube channel bye bye